Hello there, thanks so much for watching this tutorial. My name is Joe Cavazos, and today I want to show you the techniques I use to create these reflective textures. The first technique I'm going to show you is using the waves filter. Uh, this is probably the easiest way to kind of get this effect. Uh, we're going to be using this as an example. Um, so let's get started. So this is the original um, creation where I use pretty much a waves filter only. I did also use another filter that I'll tell you about here shortly. Um, but this is created with multiple images. Um, we have one layer here that kind of has this um, lower wave and then an additional layer on top that's blended in to kind of give it a little bit more dramatic wave. Um, so let's get, uh, get started with this. So here's an example doc. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is kind of figure out what the background looks like. Um, right here I have this effects layer and this is kind of what's creating the contrast and brightness. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off for now and I'm going to turn off this layer. So I'm just getting the background. Um, I'm going to hit Command A, select all, and then I'm going to go to edit, copy merge, and this is going to make a copy of whatever's showing here. So I'm going to hit uh, Command V and paste that in. I'm going to change this to copy. And let's turn this into a smart object. That way we could go back and edit and not have to worry about this, um, destroying the image. Um, and so what I'm going to do here is make sure that this layer is on top of the shape. Um, and I already have this masked out um, from the bottom. So that's why it has that mask. But I'm going to hit Command. And in between the layers, and this is going to be uh, turned into a clipping mask. So um, whatever this, whatever's on top of this shape here, it's going to stay within that shape. So I can move this around. Oops. What's going on here? Oh, make sure you got it turned on. So I can move this around, and you can see it, it all stays within the shape. I'm going to turn off this layer effect for right now. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is go to Filter and go to Distort and go down to Wave. Now one thing to consider is the image size or the document you're working in. Uh, mine's a 3840 by 3840, something like that. And so it's pretty high res um, resolution that I'm working in. And so these exact numbers work for this resolution. So depending on what's, what uh, resolution you're working in, you might want to adjust the numbers. Um, but this is actually already set uh, from the last time I used it. And I have the generation set at five, a wavelength set at 10 max 368 and so the, that's this is the minimum this is the max uh, make sure your type is set to triangle uh, on amplitude the same thing 5 max 279 and then the scale at 35 percent here for horizontal and vertical 53 and make sure that it's repeat edge pixels and you click ok and so now we're already starting to see that wave take form and so this is a quick way of just getting that look right away um, so with the previous with the example, I had another wave on top that uh, was a little bit more dramatic. So what we're going to do is hit Command J, and copy that, and then I'm going to hit Option again to make this a clipping mask. So make sure this is on top of this. Double click the wave, and now I could go back here and, and adjust. And that's why it's important um, to use smart objects so you can those go back in and edit it. And the number of generators I'm going to boost this up to like. I think it was like 35 or 40, something like that. So now we have this more dramatic wave here. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And now I'm going to create a little mask here. Get a brush. Brush. And let me turn the opacity down a little bit. Make sure I have black selected. I'm going to take some of these, blend this in a little bit more. Let's bring this down. So basically what I want this look to have is, you know, the, the waves kind of start low and then it gets more dramatic as it goes higher up this object. Uh, one final touch that I like to make is, um, especially when using the waves filter, sometimes it looks um, very squared off or very jagged. And so I want to smooth that off a little bit. And what I'm going to do is go selecting the image, go to filter, and then go to stylize, I believe. Yeah. And oil paint. And Sometimes this feature looks cheesy if you just like boost it up and you know makes it look like a fake oil painting But for this technique, I think it works really well to smooth things out So you can see here. It's already starting to look good If we max up maximize the style it's gonna make it a little bit too smooth a little bit too painterly So 
kind of somewhere in between. Again, depending on your file size, you're gonna to have to adjust. Make sure the bristle details is all the way down, clean list all the way up and scale. Depending on your size, you'll, you'll have to adjust that, but I usually just push those all the way. So once clicking OK, we'll get that effect in and we're already trying to see how, how it smooths that out. So it kind of gives it more of like a chrome finish reflection. Um, turn that back on so you can see it. And I want to add that to the bottom. So a quick way of doing that is holding down option and then click on this effect and then just dragging it over to the other smart filters. And so now we're getting that, oops, I added a wave with the oil. Getting that down there. It's gonna help smooth that out. Uh, a couple other things, um, you know, quickly, I'm just gonna show you um, some of the shadow. I'm just add a little bit of shadow. So I'm gonna select this color below. Make sure I have a big brush, smooth it. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of darkness down towards the bottom. Bring the opacity down, that just gives it. And we could go into detail and add some of the highlights and things like that, but I just really want to show you the wave filter mostly, um, along as well as this effects layer uh, at an inner shadow. So as you can see here, maybe double click on that. Um, basically what I'm doing is taking this inner shadow and changing it to white and send it to soft light. And we can bring that out a little bit more. And that's just to give a, a sense of light hitting that the edges, um, you know, depending where the light's coming. If it's coming from the top, I would point this up, um, but you can't really notice it there. You'll need some right there. But since the light is coming toward from the left side, just put it there. And so that's how I use uh, the wave filter for this technique. Okay, so let's move on to displacement maps. This by far is my favorite way of getting these textures. Um, as you can see, this image here, this is the one I created a couple weeks back. Um, it has multiple textures on top of it. So we have some reflection there, some stars, and then I did a separate reflection for the guy. Um, so you can see down there, but we're kind of just get started with the basic and just kind of go over how to create this look right here. So let's pop over here. This is the main image. Um, again, you're going to want to start with like, you're going to figure out what your background looks like um, before you kind of go in or else you're going to have to go back and forth and, and edit a lot. Um, so this is kind of the basic background that I built here. And this is using multiple layers. Um, as you can see, I had some different layers for the foreground and, and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to again hit command A and I'm gonna to go to edit, copy, merge. This is gonna, and then I'm gonna hit paste and make a copy up top. So I'm gonna label this copy and go convert to smart object. So again, uh, depending on your file size, this is a pretty large file um, that I'm working with here. So I'll keep that in mind as you create yours. I'm gonna move this up here to the object that I want to uh, be on top of hit command and go to clipping mask. And so again, if we move this around, you can see it's in there. So the different thing with this is we're gonna use a displacement map and what how the way, how the way displacements work, it uses um, the values or the different light and darks of an image to create the texture. And so I created, oops, I have a collection that uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll link to it below in the description. Um, but these are some of the images that I've been collecting to use for displacement maps. Uh, for this particular one, I use this image. So thank you, Daniel, for that. I'm gonna download it. Um, and I'm gonna create a different document. So I have this document already set up here. It's usually, I usually create the same size as whatever I'm working on. Um, I'm gonna bring this in. Again, remember what I mentioned about using the different, um, the light and dark um, creates different variations. So um, one thing, this area here is really dark. So what I'm gonna wanna do is um, add some more text here back, uh, bring some of this lighting down here. So I'm gonna make a copy and duplicate it and then just kind of fade that in. So, it's, so we don't have a big old dark spot in the text here. doesn't have to be perfect. Um, 
going to add a levels adjustment and then just really what I want to do is just kind of boost the contrast, get the blacks um, more boosted in there. And then I'm going to save this. I got to save it as a PSD. So it's already here in this folder. Just replace this and then go back to your dock and go here, select the smart object again, using a smart object works better because you can always go back and edit it. Um, and then go down to distort and displace. So this is where you could play around with different uh, options here uh, and also depending on your resolution, but I think I can start off with like 300 on the vertical scale. Um, make sure stretch to fit is there and repeat edge pixels is selected. Hit okay and it's gonna bring the dialog window up and you're gonna wanna select that displacement map that you created and hit open. So that's getting our basic texture. Um, you can see it kind of shifted the image around so we could go ahead and move it around to where we want. Um, the way I created um, this one, that's why I have different images for like the man. I created a separate so I could kind of adjust that more and have more control versus just everything being the same texture. Uh, we could go back in here and change this up. And so let's, let's say we change this back to like 20 and we want to boost the horizontal and so making these adjustments just um, gives you different textures open and so and that's looking pretty cool um, so this is I should have gone with that the first round um, this is another way of just making those adjustments to adjust the texture um, another you could do different images so like for example let's download this guy go back here I really wish it kind of worked like a smart object and maybe there's a way of doing that. If somebody knows how to do that, make sure to let me know in the comments, but um, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to bring the same boost up here. I'm going to save this. Um, and so nothing changes here, but what I'm going to have to do is go back and redo it. So hit displace, hit oops, hit, let's change this down here, 300. Hit OK. Now I'm going to select it. It's a different image. And it's going to create a totally different vibe using that, that texture as the background. Um, so that's how I use displacement maps. And then once you have what you want, then you can turn on your effects or your different tints and boosts and whatnot. Um, but that's how I create the texture. Um, and so you could do this multiple times. Uh, for example, um, this image here. I have multiple effects, so multiple waves, and I added displacement on top of that. I actually used the same image, this same image here as a displacement for this, as you can tell there. Uh, but on top of that, I've added some waves, and then I added um, the oil paint filter to smooth things out. And so um, you can use multiple effects on um, one image to create a pretty dynamic texture. And on this one, for example, this one, I use this image here. And so, as you can see, different images create different textures, so play around with that. Um, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. Love to answer um, any questions you may have. And again, thanks for watching.